Hello and welcome everyone. I am Anisha. Welcome all of you to my channel that is virtual classes. Okay. So in this uh, video, today's video, we are going to discuss your textual question and answer of your chapter number two that is diversity in the living world. All right. And today this lecture will be uh, the explanation will be completely in English. If you want to listen the Hindi explanation, please go through the description box. Okay, you'll find the link. And after discussing this textual question and answer, we'll be discussing your summary. And that summary we are going to discuss in little bit detail so that that will help you in your exam. Okay, you can prepare or use those notes to revise the complete chapter. And thereafter, we are also going to discuss the short questions, long questions, objective types, and fill in the blanks. So first, we are let us solve the textual question and answer which is given in your text book so let us start and yes please don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel so your first question here are two types of seeds what differences do you find among the roots and leaf venation of their plants so here two type of seeds are given one is of wheat and another is of kidney beans so what differences do you find among the roots so we have to you have to give answer about the roots okay and their leaf venation so let us see the answer in case of wheat. See, wheat is a monocot seed, okay? Monocot seed. So, if it is monocot, the answer will be fibrous root. Root type will be fibrous and leaf venation will be parallel. And as I have told you before, uh, we have already learned about this in our classes. If you have not watched that video, please do watch that uh, class, okay? So, that it will be clear to you. So, where we have learned that if the plant type, if the seed type is monocot, then the root in generally, okay, in most cases, the root type is fibrous and the leaf venation is parallel, all right? And whereas in the case of kidney beans, if the seed is dicot plant, that is, we can divide the kidney beans into two parts isn't it what each part is what what do we call that each part please write down in the comment section if you have watched my class and if it is a dicot plant then the root system is always taproot okay and the leaf venation is always reticulate venation reticulate venation taproot and dicot so you have to remember this okay so in this way you can write your answer here the main difference lies in the type of roots and the pattern of leaf venation okay so the dicot plants like uh, kidney beans have a taproot system and reticulate venation while monocot plants like wheat have fibrous root system and a parallel venation so in this way you can write down your answer you can take the screenshot and you can write it down in your notebook afterwards next question name of some animals are given below group them based on their habitats write the names of aquatic animals in area marked a and terrestrial animal in the area marked b enter the names of animal living in both habitats in part c so here list of animals are given okay and here this diagram is given in your class, isn't it? Sorry, given in your textbook. So you have to fill it up. In A, you have to mark the animals which are living in aquatic, okay, aquatic habitat. And in uh, B, you have to mark animals who are living in land area, that is terrestrial. Terrestrial animal means animal which are living in the land. And on this C, on this middle part, you have to write down the names of those animals who can live both in land as well as in water okay so let's see the answer here see answer is given here okay in case of aquatic dolphin crocodile and whale and terrestrial we have horse sheep uh, squirrel pigeon and artworm and uh, in both we have a uh, frog and tortoise and in case of this crocodile okay please listen in case of this crocodile i have placed this in this aquatic because most of the time cro uh, crocodiles spend their life in inside the water only okay but when they uh, for nesting and for laying eggs they used to come to land okay only for that purpose so that is why i have written this here in the aquatic okay so this is the answer now let us see your next question manu's mother maintain a kitchen garden one day she was digging out radish from the soil she told Manu that the radish is a kind of root, that, uh, that radish it is also a kind of root. And which root? It is a tap root, okay? And examine a radish and write down what type of root it is. So, we have to write about its root. And, okay, here the question is incomplete. I will read it out. You can see from your textbook as well, okay? And what type of venation would you observe in the leaves of a radish plant? So, you have to write the type of venation, okay? It's leaf venation and you have to write the uh, roots of this tap root, okay? You have to observe and you have to write. So, I'll assume that you have observed. So, the answer is root and venation of radius. So, radius is a dicot plant, okay, dicot plant with a tap root system, okay. 
and it leaves exhibit reticulate venation. So the thick fleshy root of uh, radis is a characteristic of taproot and the leaf have a net like venation pattern. So you can write the answer in this way here. See I am not going to again explain everything because we have already completed in your chapter. If you have not watched that uh, class please do watch that class first and after that you will only understand the answer that I have given here. Next question we have look at the image of a mountain goat and a goat found in the plains. Point out the similarities and differences between them. What are the reasons for these differences? So here image is given. So this is a mountain goat and this is a plain goat okay found in plain goat. See remember in the chapter what we have difference we have done differences about the camel which is living in a hot uh, desert that is in Rajasthan and another camel which is living in a cold desert that is Ladakh. So similarly here also we have to find the differences between these two god which is one is a mountain god and another is a plain god. So by seeing the picture we can say there are lots of differences isn't it. So now let us see what are the difference here. So similarities and differences. So first we have to find find point out the similarities and differences okay and we have to give the reason for their differences so here you can make a table in this way okay and you can write mountain god and plain god in another column so first let us see for adaptation so in case of mountain god they have a strong legs for climbing mountains okay and plain god they have a normal legs for flat surface you can examine their legs the mountain god's leg is very strong and sturdy okay and next we have a quad type again in quad type also the clear difference is that there that is in case of mountain god we have a thick fur to withstand the cold as in the mountain area it used to uh, snowfall very frequently so in order to uh, live in that cold condition the mountain god fur are very thick okay and in case of plain god they have a thin coat suitable for plains because in plains it, there is it is not that cold as compared to mountain area especially in the himalayan range if you compare that area and the plain area so the plain area god they adapt themselves on the condition okay on the biodiversity which they are living in okay and body structure let us talk about the body structure here robust and muscular in case of a mountain goat you can see the picture isn't it it is a very muscular and very robust very sturdy hard and sturdy so another again about the plain goat it is normal build they don't have any extra muscular there but in case of mountain goat see they have a very different feature isn't it so this is the similarities and differences okay so here uh, now let us see the reason for your differences okay the differences arises due to adaptation to their habitats mountain goats are adapted to rocky terrain and cold climate while plain goats are adapted to uh, warmer and flatter area so these differences is because of their adaptation into their habitats in which the area where they are living according to that they have adapted okay so that is why mountain goat are adapted to a very rocky terrain and a very cold climate whereas these plain goats are been adapted to a very warmer and flatter area warmer and flatter area so that is why they have these differences okay next question Group the following animals into two groups based on any features other than those discussed in the chapter that is a cow, cockroach, pigeon, bait, tortoise, whale, fish, grasshopper and lizard. So let us see its answer grouping of animals based on other features. Here feature first you can write a flying and another we can write walking or running. Okay. So under this flying you can write pigeon, bait and grasshopper and under group B that is walking we can write cow, whale and lizard. Okay. So, okay, under this working, you can write this tortoise also. Okay, I have missed this tortoise here. So, you can enter tortoise as well. All right. And cockroach, a cockroach, you can write in this flying section because they can walk as well as fly. Okay. Okay, next. As the population grows and people want more comfortable lives, forests are being cut down to meet various needs. How can this affect our surrounding? How do you think we can address this challenge? See, as we have seen that so many animals habitat have been destructed because of cutting down of so many trees by the human acti activities for various type of construction. So how this is affecting our society? We have to write about that. Okay. And we also have to give a solution regarding it. So effect of deforestation. In deforestation means when you are cutting down of trees, cutting down so many trees in the same place and again burning them down. Okay. Without planting more trees. So cutting down forest can have the following uh, effects that is loss of habitat especially for animals okay many animals and plants lose their natural homes 
and next soil erosion even the quality of the soil it decreases so that is why there is soil erosion that is so roots be, uh, bind the soil and deforestation can lead to soil degradation uh, when you if you are practicing deforestation again and again then what will happen the soil in that area there it will and the nutrients will not be present anymore in that soil okay that soil will be completely uh, less nutritive Next we have a climate change because trees plays a very vital role in maintaining the atmospheric balance. So that is why we have a climate change and that is why these, these days if you compare with even uh, last five years also the climate has become very very hot. Okay, The climate the weather condition is becoming very hot during summer times and especially during winter times it is becoming very uh, very cold and this is all because of the global warming and the reason behind it is cutting down continuous cutting down of our trees and dest uh, destroying our forest next we have the solution okay how do you think we can address this challenge so you can write implementing afforestation and reforestation project that is by planting trees okay and creating awareness about the importance of forest and next you can write strict regulations against illegal lo logging so like in your book they have given the example of that uh, silent valley and that uh, sacred uh, groups isn't it so we have to regulate a very strict rule and you should not allow any human to in enter in such an area and cut down trees so that you can maintain the biodiversity of that area otherwise what will happen there will be loss of habitat again okay so in this way you can write the answer all right so next question analyze the flow chart what can be example of a and example b see we have to analyze this flow chart okay this flow chart and in case of yes a a okay and in case of no b so we have to give an example here so let us see plan in case of a let us first see okay plan yes so does it have leaves yes it have leaf so does it have reticulate venation in case of yes so we are going to do for a okay so what will be the example here we have done isn't it so it could be a dicot plan an example a bean plan okay Next, in case of B, let, again, let us see. Let us try to give the example. Plant, yes. Does it have leaves? Yes. And does it have reticulate venation? No. In case of no, let us give the example. It could be monocot plant. All right. An example, mage. So, in this way, you can write the answer example here. So, next question, let us see. Raj argues with his friends, friend Sanjay that Goodhal, that is hibiscus plant, okay, is a shrub. And what questions can Sanjay ask for clarification? So now Raj is arguing Sanjay, okay, that hibiscus plant is a shrub. And so now, uh, what is your question here? You have to frame certain questions so that Sanjay can clarify himself that yes, good hibiscus flower is hibiscus plant is a shrub. So what uh, what can be the questions here? Clarification on uh, hibiscus that as a shrub. So Sanjay can ask the following question to clarify Raj statement. Okay, first is what characteristics make a plant a shrub? So first he can ask about the characteristics of a plant which will include them under the category of shrub. Next, does Goodhill have a hard stem and multiple branches growing close to the ground? So he can ask this question. Does this Goodhill plant have a hard stem and as well as a very uh, multiple branches? Again, that is growing close to the ground if it is growing growing high higher from the ground then it will be under tree so this is one of the characteristics of shrub okay so he can ask this question and how tall does the goodal plant grow again he can ask about the height if it grows very tall then it will not be included under shrub it will be under tree but again you have to examine its stem also okay so next question based on the information in table find out examples of these plant there for each group so here type of seed is given and type of roots is given see this is very uh, easy we have done so many time and i have made you understand also isn't it if it is a dicot tap root what will be the answer example and if it is monocot fibrous root then what will be the answer we can see even the leaf, uh, leaf venation also isn't it if it is tap root then what will be the leaf venation reticulate venation and if it is fibrous root what will be the leaf venation it will be parallel venation okay so now let us see the example here first dicot and tap root so the example is mango and hibiscus okay second about monocot the example are wheat and mage okay we have so many other example you can find more example and you can mention in the comment section 
So, what other similarity do plant of group A have? So, now let us see reticulate venation in leaf. See, what the, uh, that I have told you, isn't it? Both of these plant have reticulate venation. So, now about next, what other similarity do plants of group B have? In this one, they have a parallel leaf venation, okay? The answer will be parallel venations in leaves. So, this will be your answer. I hope this was clear. So, now let us see in the last question of your book, okay. So, here you have to observe these two image, alright. So, observe the label part of a duck in the picture given below, especially this part, okay, label part. So, what differences do you observe in the feet of a duck compared to other birds and which activity would the duck be able to perform using this part? So, what is the difference here? See, the feet of this duck and the feet of this pigeon. See the feet of this duck it help it has a webbed feet, isn't it? Because it will help the duck to swim in the water. It will perform the function of oars when you are um, uh, riding a boat. You need an oar, oar, isn't it? So that function is been performed by the webbed feet. Okay, so duck feet are webbed to facilitate. Okay, facilitate means to help swimming. While pigeon feet are adapted for perching and working. In case of pigeon feet, they are adapted for working. Okay, working and perching. So webbed feet enables duck to move efficiently in water. So with the help of this webbed feet, they can swim easily. Okay, inside the water. So these uh, were the 10 questions that we have discussed okay in today's video in my next video i'll bring the summary all right and we'll discuss that summary again in little bit detail so that that summary will help you in your exam that will be a quick revision for you okay so with this uh, we'll end up to our today's class and yes please uh, please leave a comment okay how do you find today's class and also don't forget to like this video and share with your friends as well okay so all of you have a very nice day ahead bye